Hello, welcome to DIY is my happy place. I am so excited for today because we are going to be doing all different types of solar lights. In fact, we're going to do the top 10 solar lights. And I have to say, they turned out fantastic. And the best part is, they're made from Dollar Tree supplies. We just had a graduation party at our house and in the backyard, and everyone was just amazed at all the different solar lights that I had hanging from the trees, along the fence line, in the garden, in the flower beds. It's fantastic. We're going to have fun today. Let's get started. going to be our top 10 solar lanterns made mostly from Dollar Tree supplies. The first thing we need is a wire basket and then I've got a hanging bell that I jazzed up a while ago and a solar light. Now my bell that I got I will now use to help hang this beautiful little solar lantern. Now I do recommend you get a little welding tool if you want to do these and it is definitely worth and I'll put in the a link below of where you can pick one up and I definitely like to use super glue or E6000 and sometimes I use hot glue as well just to hold it into place until that super glue dries like I'm going to in this case but I don't want any hot glue to show on the outside of it so they glue up inside the bell and then it'll seep down and hold it. I'm so glad to say that these cute white, these cute gems are back. They've been out of stock for a while, but they, I did see them in the Dollar Tree today, so they are back. And I just glue those on the very bottom. Look how fast and easy this is. My little bell came with a little hanger, and then I picked up one of these wire hangers from the Dollar Tree, and that is all it takes. There you go. Number one is done. And now this is what I get to see when I look out my window. Love it. It's pretty in the day and in the night. Now, the second Dollar Tree solar lantern is made with these butterfly lanterns and some plastic bowls. Again, I'm going to use my welding tool and I'm going to weld out just melt out the center of the bowl. Now you can do this with a hot glue gun actually too, but it's just a lot easier if you have a fine tooth, fine tool welder. Okay, there we go. We're just melting that all out. And look how cute that is. That'll make a really nice uh, skirt around it. Okay, there it, it's coming together. Now I just need to glue, I can, um, attach it a little bit but I want to reinforce it because these are going to be in the outside and they need to be able to withstand wind and rain so we're going to get them nice and glued in and that is how we're going to do our butterfly solar lantern perfect I'll just duplicate that with the five that I have and they can just line my flower beds I love it these are just the perfect way to Enhance something that was just a dollar and jazz it up a little bit more. Okay, number three, we're gonna use a toothbrush holder. It has a lid on lid on it that comes right off the, the toothbrush and we'll put that aside because we're gonna use that on a different one. So we're gonna use our toothbrush holder, we're gonna melt the bottom out and I love how it has the ridges around it. So that will make a nice lantern shade okay now we're going to use up all the pieces that we can again i'll say this over again hot glue and super glue okay put that together reinforce it and that's all it takes for that lantern now if you want to do hanging they do come up they do have at the dollar tree some wire hangers and so you just melt little holes into the side and then hook on your wire hanger and you can also get the holder and i did it with a glass the same exact thing as with the toothbrush holder there it is fantastic 
Okay, number four. Now we're going to use the top of the toothbrush holder, melt off part of it so that I can fit my solar lantern in. And I've got some duct tape, silver, fancy, shiny. And then I will trim it out with some gems. Now this one's the self-adhesive type, so I don't have to glue that on. Now there's a lot of different things that you can use for filler on this particular one. You can use beads, rocks, pearls. I'm actually using some Jordan almonds that were left over from a wedding. They're very stale. They're just used for decoration. I don't quite have enough to fill the jar, so I'm putting a styrofoam ball in to help fill up the rest of it. You won't even see the ball. All you'll see is those fancy looking Jordan almonds in there. Okay, now we're gonna glue this all down. And this is the perfect thing to use for a nightlight in a room. I keep it in the windowsill so that it can get lit up and that can be a beautiful little nightlight wherever you want to have it. Okay, next, number five. This might be my favorite one of all. Now, you can use different types of wooden blocks. I actually took these from a building game that we had and I know the Dollar Tree has a version of this game and you can pick up those blocks sometimes they have them sometimes they don't regardless you can just cut up some pieces of wood and then we're going to hang this using shower curtain rings and i love using the shower curtain rings and zip ties okay so we're going to drill some holes through the wood put our zip ties through and our shower curtain ring and seal that off nice and i'm using the fairly large zip ties so that it'll be nice and strong. Turn around the edge so that the part that comes apart is towards the inside. And there we have it. Now, once that's in place, we are going to want to reinforce this with glue. Everything needs to be reinforced with super glue so that it's nice and sturdy. Once you get them glued, you wanna let them dry for a good six hours before you add the light to it. Just cut off the back and I'm just gonna duplicate those because I plan on doing a whole row down the fence line. This is gonna go right on my fence line. So there we go. I let those dry overnight. Then I add my Dollar Tree lights to them. I'm gonna take the bottoms off, put a gem on the bottom. Actually, I'm going to use the fishbowl gems on this one. Put them on the bottom just to finish the edge off. And I went ahead and used hot glue only. I didn't use super glue on this because it's not really in a place where it's going to see trauma. It's been out for a month. None of the beads have popped off. So that seems to be working. Now this fits perfectly into the shower curtain ring but once again i'm going to reinforce it with glue and super glue there we go look how fun that is and i love this it it's so reasonably priced and i can just do a whole roll row all the way down my fence line every single part needs to be extra glued because these will see quite a bit of wind and rain. I think this might be my favorite one. We just had a party and everyone was commenting on my lanterns all around. Okay, number six. I'm just going to use a mason jar. Got some more fishbowl gems. And my Dollar Tree solar light. And this has to be one of the easiest ones going to use another top from a toothbrush holder and glue everything on, add some gems. This time I'm going to put the gems right on the outside of the mason jar. And I do recommend you reinforce the hot glue with super glue, especially on this one, because they will pop off over time if you don't glue them down. Add some glam. And it makes the perfect little centerpiece, nightlight, or you can put them out on a table 
for a party. I keep this one in my kitchen windowsill right by my sink so that it gets plenty of light. Okay, next I have these pinwheels. I use quite a few of them and I use maybe just one of the flower petals for different gnome skirts. So I'll end up with extra petals that I don't have anything to do with. So I go ahead and pull the wires and I'm going to use the wires on this lantern because I don't want to waste anything. This is the kind of wire that I'm wanting it to be like, but I don't want to have to buy them all. So I use wire that I already have from my pinwheels. But again, you can just get wire. Wire's not very expensive, but you do want it to be very heavy duty because this lantern is going to want to be able to hold up and not bend around. So take some pliers and bend the wires. And then once again, I use my handy welding tool to melt the plastic. I'm going to take the, the bottoms off of this one. These particular cups are pretty thick. That takes a little bit more effort, but not that much to melt the bottoms off. And then I need to melt holes into the sides to be able to string my wires through. And that's all it takes for this one. And I decided it'd be fun to have a red, white, and blue. So I did three on this lantern. And you just use your wire cutters to bend the wires into place. And these come together really fast. So easy, so fun, and so decorative. I get more comments about these three lanterns than probably any of the other lanterns because I guess the color, they stand out and you can see them from the street. But once again, reinforce with glue. I'll try not to say it over and over, but it is helpful. Okay, there we go. We're just gonna put those to the side, let them dry. Boom, done. Love it. Now my third one, done. And I thought it would be fun to have that one a different size. So I used a smaller glass for that one so that they would have a little dimension in the tree. And there we go. I absolutely love it. And they look so beautiful. Okay, now this is number eight and nine I'm gonna do simultaneously. You pick up the boards, decorative boards, and we're gonna, you can do different colors. And I actually use the watercolor paints, water them down a little bit, because I want it to be more of a whitewash. And the reason why I'm gonna get away with watercolor paint is I'm gonna put some polyurethane spray over the top of it. But I just wanted it to be kind of a gray wash. So you can see I'm doing two different styles. And then once again, I'm gonna use my shower curtain rings, apply them just like I did with the others. And there you go. Now, you can also make them gray or any other color. And finally, number 10, we're going back to our fishbowl beads and mason jar. We're gonna put those in there. Again, I'm gonna use my toothbrush holder lid and a Dollar Tree light. And then I'm using the mason jar lid on this one, but I put the beads all the way around it. So you can't tell that it's a mason jar lid. Screw it on top. That's all there is to it. There we go, number 10. Now, let me show you what they look like when it's dark. I love this one. Now, let me tell you one thing about solar lights. Wherever you hang them, if they're too far up underneath an eave, they won't get enough sunlight. So you do need to have them where they actually get sun um, in order to light up. And I, I have some up right next to my door and those don't get enough sunlight because there's eaves over them. So they, these are solar lights and they really need solar light in order to work. Now, some of these I've used for, um, the, the ones on my fence I love because they just are self working. I don't have to do anything for them, but the ones that are decorations that go on tables, I use, I have them inside my house for a decoration. They don't light up at night because they don't have any solar light. So what I've found, if I want to use them on a picnic in the evening, what I do is I just put them out in a nice sunlight sun source 
throughout the day so that I can put them on the picnic tables in the evening and then they can light up. So that's what I do with those. This one I put clear out on the pillars and on the edge of the house so that it could light up. But otherwise, that's how we do it. It is fantastic. Thank you so much. I hope I've inspired you. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click on one right here or one right here. I'll see you again soon.